Well, this is uh, for documentation purposes, and uh, I hope this turns out to be a success uh, for intactivism uh, for this baby and for the parents. Uh, I say for the parents because right now, if you are still doing this horrible abuse to your children, by the time your son is 20 years of age, the world will have already exposed this because it is being exposed as we speak. In fact, we are doing the exposing. The parents that do this now, your children are going to hate you. They're going to know that you had access to all the information in the world. Opportunities abide with just a couple of Google searches. And you still chose to harm them for ridiculous pseudoscience, medical excuses, irrational uh, body shaming lies, and a cultural norm that harms children. We are literally the United States of America, the biggest hypocrisy hypocrites in the entire world, the land of the free, the home of the brave. We are the opposite of that. We are a genital mutilation culture that attacks little babies' genitals and then shames men for speaking out against it. In fact, I've been blocked from so many platforms, it's ridiculous because I am exposing the sickness that is inherent in these, in the evilness of this uh, horrible event or the horrible atrocity that's being perpetuated on our babies. I mean, you, it's so mind-boggling and disgusting. I, I, can't even, I can't even come to terms with the fact that this is even a real thing. But I literally have dedicated my life to ending it. So let's read through this. Um, Diana Woods, I hope Mrs. Woods, I hope you, um, I hope you can uh, learn from the intactivists uh, and I hope you can protect your child and, and, and be a better parent um, because what you are doing to your child, if it was done to you, you would be screaming your head off at the police station demanding justice, demanding justice, and you would suffer the rest of your life just like me just like every single mutilated man. Now, we may not know that we're suffering because of this. We may not know that that anger issue that we have, that insecurity that we have, the, the, um, the lack of fulfillment that a lot of us have is directly related to this horrible event that was perpetuated on us as a baby that we don't even have conscious memory of it. Now, we may not have conscious memory of it, but we have a lasting effect through what's called... ACE or adverse childhood experience. We are literally torturing babies with the most torture most men will ever experience in their entire lives at what psychologists call the critical period of brain development. So anyways, I'm going to read through this uh, post real quick um, and let's see if we can, uh, if this turns out for a win. If not, then this is some information for Mrs. Wood's son who at one time in the future may want to know why this was done to him, and if his mom had access to better information. Well, the boys won't be coming home today. That means two of them. Oh, my God. Twins. I, I guess I didn't pay attention to that part the first time. They haven't gotten around to doing their circumcisions this morning. So the NICU nurse said, since it hasn't been done already, by this time today, it will be tomorrow. Crying. Wow. But the way they work, we ain't, we ain't getting our hoops up because it's liable to be Monday before to even do the operation on them because they try not to have to do anything non-emergency related on the weekends. Well, that's how it seems so far anyways. I don't know, lady. These mutilators are extremely, extremely excited to do this. I'm sure they will jump at any opportunity to hurt children. So I'm trying to look at it positively. I'm trying to look at it positively too, but uh, I, I don't see anything positive about you as a person. Many parents have waited a long time to have their babies home. So even a few more days, many parents don't hurt their children. They protect their children from violent sexual assault by psychopathic quacks using ignorant pseudoscience nonsense that's long been debunked. Sorry, I can't, I really, maybe sometimes not the person for this, but you know, it is what it is. I'm trying to look at it positively. Many parents waited a longer, a lot longer to have their babies home. So even a few days more, 
is better than most parents. Right now you're missing the time that your children should be connecting with you and be on your breast and be on your skin and be connected with you emotionally. Absolutely outrageous. You're waiting for them to be mutilated and tortured. I just don't understand this world. We are just so ready for them to be home. Wow. Okay, uh, Teresa Roberts says, Jace is in the ICU for almost three weeks. John Smith says, leave children's genitals TF alone, psychos, right? Prayers for them sweet babies and for you, mama. How about prayers for protecting children from violent sexual assault that violates the very tenets of the Christian religion you supposedly claim near, that you're part of? Maybe read the second half of the Bible where Jesus fulfilled the covenant. And Paul, and, and uh, stop circumcision. Rosemary Paradis. That means you got more time to decide not to mutilate them instead. They are not ready to have their genitals mutilated. I never had to wait so long for my son to be raped to bring him home. To bring him home. Him home, of course. Uh, Brittany Jane. Evidence and ethics on circumcision. Amazing. Please read this before allowing your precious babies to be harmed. I promise you, you won't regret leaving their bodies alone. I don't know how I missed giving this one a nice love. Okay, Aisha Tokata. Uh, right now, your sons don't have to be, have bod bloody and scarred, mutilated, permanently dysfunctional genitals. Right now, your sons are happy and peaceful. Why would you risk killing them to carve a birth defect, what's called a postia, in their, in their flesh? Why would you trade a peaceful postpartum experience for tortured, traumatized babies and bloody diapers? Love them, don't cut them. Exactly. I mean, it's just, it's just so common sense. It's just so obvious. It's so blatant. P.S. You know, I just, like I say, don't shop when you're hungry. Don't read intactivist memes when you haven't had enough sleep. And your trauma damage from your own circumcision. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm still here and I'm still fighting for babies. And I'm never going to stop. P.S. They don't ever, ever use adequate anesthesia and most mutilators use none at all. Why would you cut off the most sensitive part of your son's genitals? It doesn't make any sense. You have instincts to protect them. Obviously not. But I, I'm glad that you have this um, almost a you know, view that mothers should have these instincts. But apparently that doesn't occur with a lot of these parents. Listen to those instincts. Bloody diapers are not normal. Get them babies home ready already without mutilating them. Right? Just love him. Don't cut him. Savingsons.org. Let's see. Circumcision facts. I'm going to go through this. I'm not going to read through every one of these. You guys can pause the video and read through these. Um, facts of hemorrhaging from circumcision. Baby needs only to lose an ounce of blood to hemorrhage and just 2.3 ounces to die as a result of this blood, blood loss. SIDS and circumcision. There is double the rate of SIDS in circumcising areas and circumcising cultures. Double. This is a this is uh, theorized why this is the uh, uh, cause of, of male bias in SIDS. Something to consider. There are so many unnecessary risks and pain from something that isn't even needed with this procedure on full term healthy babies as it is. And circumcision on preemies puts them at an even higher more. A much more higher risk of setbacks and complications. Please do not put your babies at risk. It's not worth it. Amanda, thank you so much for this insight. Stanford School of Medicine. Here are long-term and short-term complications. Yes, there's a risk of possible death. There is zero risk of death from having intact, not circumcised penis. You really need to kill your son to give him a damage to his genitals? What kind of world do I live in? Mothers. That baby just came out of your body. That's your body. You have flaps upon flaps. You have a labia majora, which sits upon a which on, on top of that sits a labia minora. And then you have your own clitoral hood, which is the anatomical homogulus tissue to the male prepuce, which removal of is the most common form of FGM. And is so much smaller and less functional than the male part, because the male part obviously grows to be one half the surface area of the man's entire genitalia. 
It sits in the middle of his genitals. It's not on the tip. It doesn't hang off the tip. My scar's not on the tip. It's in the middle. It's in the middle. And that scar, by the way, never fully grows correctly, which means that all the circumcised men, you've been having tissue detracting from your growth since the day you were mutilated. That tissue will never grow the same as non-scar tissue, which means it will always have tougher tissue that grows into the man. The worst scar you could put on somebody is when they are a baby, a baby. Because that scar will grow. The scar in my neck were these quacktards that mutilated me. I also had an ear infection. Uh, that I almost died for, apparently. They did a surgery to remove my lymph nodes because my lymph nodes were swollen. My lymph nodes were working hard to protect me and they removed the protection. I mean, I had two surgeries done on me as a baby that were unnecessary. Two. Now listen to this. This scar tissue has created tension into my neck. It is attached all the way into the very... Fundamental embryonic basis of my birth and has been pulling on my neck and has strained my neck for my entire life and I had no idea until I started doing scar tissue massage therapy on myself and had others help me with it. You're scarring your children, Mrs. Woods. You're hurting your children. Your child, if he was able to be released today, should be in your arms on your breast, both of them, right now, as we speak. You are giving away valuable, important time that your child needs to be with his mother. Both of them. And sacrificing it for what? So you can fail them as a mother and as a human being? We are documenting these abuses because the children that are being subjected to this, deserve the truth. And they deserve to know what their parents knew before they allowed this or even paid for this, signed off on this evil, disgusting, horrible crime against children who cannot defend themselves. Absolutely outrageous. Outrageous. Okay, don't do intactivism when you're tired <laughs> and suffer PTSD from your traumatic mutilation. Just so you guys know, I have a three millimeter dark scar on the left ventral surface of my genitals. There is a tight tissue that goes all the way to the base. It's been pulling on me since I was born. I just realized this when I was trying to restore and I found this tissue, just this extreme scar tissue, just holding on with every bit of its might. And I started pulling on it and I started stretching it and I started working on it, trying to break it apart. And you know what happened? I hang lower. You literally can't make this stuff up. I hang lower. I'm bigger now because I started pulling on this. This is reducing the size of our growth in our potential this this is wrong in every sort kind of way that can possibly be imagined on the planet oh my god skip the circumcision they are already perfect bethany starns amanda berthia me i'm sorry if i mispronounce your name all studies ever done prove intimate circumcision is in fact extremely painful even with the nerve block because it's the only able to numb half the penis as the other half is supplied by a different nerve. That is correct. That is correct. The dorsal nerve block only blocks the dorsal nerve. The perennial nerve, the underside, which is almost impossible to block unless they do a ring block, which is almost never done, innervates the frenulum and the underside, which is the most sensitive part where the miser corpuscles are found. It's, 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 it's just, it's just mind boggling. I just have to, I can't even believe I have to tell you this. <sighs> huh. 
Okay. They put adults to sleep for a reason because it's so excruciating. Yes, they put the adults to sleep. Babies cannot get general anesthesia because they might not make up, wake up. Because the incidence of, uh, you know, everybody's different. Everybody's born. Everybody has different genetics. The way we react to different drugs is different. That's why you have people that have some symptoms to drugs and others have opposite symptoms to the same drug. We are all biologically and, and uh, um, physiologically different. So be, the people are going to react differently. <sighs> so anyways, 11 male babies were circumcised with a dorsal lark and 13 controls were circumcised without anesthesia. Matched pairs of pre-cortisol and post-circumcision cortisol levels in the two groups were compared. The adrenal cortisol response to surgery was not significantly reduced by the administration of lidocaine. Blood sampling and anesthetic injection of any puncture alone, of any puncture alone, did not evoke the adrenal response in uncircumcised control infants. Okay, blood sampling and anesthetic injection of any puncture alone did not evoke the adrenal response in uncircumcised control infants. Okay, so they did a control. What that means is they gave the babies an injection of saline. They didn't give them an injection of lidocaine. Lidocaine, which means they gave them an injection and they measured the post-injection response. And it was minimal compared to the mutilation is what this is basically saying. Cortisol input or secondary epinephrine evaluation may not be producing the cortisol elevation in infants despite regional blockage of the efferent nerve pathways. Okay. Uh, newborns have pain as adults and have lower pain thresholds than adults. The baby suffers five times more than an adult. The baby is five times more sensitive than an adult. The nerve pathways are much closer to the brain than in the adult. The newborn skin is more sensitive than the adult. The adult has a lifetime or a point in time of, you know, actual exposure to the world and stress and that happens to develop skin strength. The children, babies don't have that. Study halted because of the pain. Newborn circumcision caused severe and, and persistent pain. Acetaminophen does not ameliorate postoperative pain. Some people have even theorized that acetaminophen is responsible, which is Tylenol, is responsible for some autism uh, responses in, in children. I can't say that. You know, I know there's a big question about all the science behind that, but um, there's always a question with science. And if you think you know science and you say that this is proven by science, you don't know science. It permanently alters and leaves a lasting scar on the brain as trauma via MRI studies done before and after, much after the cut has been done. I know I see the psychological damage that circumcision causes for adult men. It's really sad and upsetting once you know what to, to look for and see. I lived in Germany as a child. Okay, I came from America, the cowboys and Indians. I used to get guns to play with and shoot at my friends. I preferred the Indian, by the way. I was always the Indian because what he represented, uh, I, I, I loved the freedom of the Indian, of the native. I loved their lifestyle. I loved their cultures. Many, I mean, they're all different cultures. But anyways, getting back to this. When I lived in Germany, there's a big, huge difference in the cultures, right? It was a culture shock to me. I lived in Alabama as a kid. I um, moved to Germany as my dad was in the military. I was eight years old. Complete culture shock. One of the things I noticed at the time about the German men is they almost seemed docile, which was surprising to me because, you know, they almost took over the world twice. Uh, but they seemed very unaggressive. They seemed to be almost like they would look down their noses at people that were these tough guys that I supported revered at the time that I thought was so cool of American culture, that John Wayne mentality, which really is, is a sort of um, what I think is a, an, uh, off of years of studying this and understanding brain structure, understanding the anatomy, understanding a adverse childhood experiences, reading the psychology. Um, I realized that, you know, this, this aggressive male mentality in America, this tough guy, I'm so cool, you know, the Arnold Schwarzenegger type of thing. Uh, by the way, Arnold was intact. He was born in Austria. Uh, but, you know, I mean, there's, there's, there's that in humanity as itself, you know. I mean, 
there's people from Mexico that are really tough MMA fighters and you know what I mean and and uh, they didn't have this happen to them. It's, I'm not saying that this is the only trauma that there is or just necessary for all of the aggressive responses of males, but I'm saying it's responsible for the aberrant aggression of males, the aberrant personality of males in our culture, and it's responsible for a feedback loop, a positive feedback loop that perpetuates violence and creates more other traumas that are not attached to the original trauma. If you look at the number of serial killers the United States of America has compared to the rest of the world, you will be shocked. Shocked. It's uncomparable. If you compare the violence of certain cultures to other cultures, compare the mutilated cultures compared to the intact cultures, there's a huge difference in violence, in warmongering, in uh, aggressiveness, in violence. The United States of America has the largest prison population in the world. Um, we have the largest number of serial killers by far. We have the largest number of school shooters by far. How many suicide bombers happen in mutilating cultures? I went through the 90s and 2000s hearing about one bomb after another bomb. Suicide bombers from religions of peace. From child mutilation cultures of peace. This is one of the most horrible, horrific things you could possibly do to a human, be a human being. And to do this to babies is unforgivable, Mrs. Woods. To do this to your son is unforgivable. And I will never stop fighting this. And I'm so, so glad that my mother and my father have completely redeemed themselves. I'm not going to get into it. That's another story. But my mother supports me. It even hurt me to tell her because I knew she would be, it would hurt her, you know, and it did. Anyways, this gets the hug. All right, so uh, preterm birth and neonatal circumcision are associated with greater risk of SIDS. Oh my God, you, you're, you're, you're already doubling the risk of SIDS with circumcision. Now you're doing it with prematurity. My God, my God. What kind of world do I live in? <sighs> Sorry, I'm an emotional person. All right. Uh. Amy Child. Great, so now you've got 30 minutes to hear a university lecture from Professor Ryan McAllister. That is an awesome... Uh, if you haven't seen uh, Elephant in the Hospital by uh, Professor Brian, Ryan McAllister, please go look at it. Best video ever. It's so informative. It is a bare bones, to the point, uh, great, uh, you know, free online, and, and you just have to YouTube it, and there it'll pop up. And it's a free education for parents to hopefully break this cycle of violence. Skip the procedure. By the way, a cycle of violence, the, the trauma, okay, that I'm talking about and we've been discussing is an actual, this is where the denial of men come from. This is where the men who can't come to terms with their own anatomical facts comes from. When you hear a man say, I prefer to be circumcised. I'm glad my parents did it to me as a baby because I don't have to suffer as an adult. Number one, what a cowardly statement. You're going to force this on babies. What you wanted to do as an adult, which you didn't have the balls to do to yourself as an adult. So you want to force it on little babies? The pain that you can't handle? that they have to suffer five times more intensely, that they suffer at the critical period of their brain development, causing brain structural damage for life, morphological structural changes in the brain through the epigenetic influence of trauma and pain on the baby at the critical period of brain development. This is all documented with, with medical uh, studies and scientific studies. <sighs> Sorry. Skip the procedure. Spare your babies from unnecessary pain, risk, and trauma. It's not worth it. They will be fine living their lives with their normal, healthy genitalia. There's not going to be a baby alive in 20 years that will thank their parents for gently mutilating them. When the facts come out that the, the foreskin is the most primary, is the primary sensory tissue, it is the most sensitive part of our genitalia, it is the most pleasurable part of our entire bodies, it gives pleasure, it receives pleasure, it is in the middle of our genitals, it retracts. When, when a man gets an erection, the tissue inverts, exposing 
the juicy part, the, the best part. And that part directly gives and receives pleasure during intercourse. It is the Super Bowl of the male's genitalia. It is the, it's, it's, it's where it's all at. That's why it's so painful. Right? And that's why men can't accept this. They are in denial. The second thing is a compulsion, an extreme obsession with continuing the cycle on their own children. The men say, I want my child to match me. It's the most ludicrous thing I've ever said. I've ever heard. Said. <laughs> Sorry. Um, y- y- you want your child to match your scars? Wow. So if your child breaks his arm, are you going to break your arm too? So you can match your son? If he loses a finger or an ear, are you going to cut yours off too so you can match him? No, you're just going to force it on him, right? No, this is a trauma response to deep psychological damage that is ingrained in the brain from the infancy. And that's why it perpetuates so powerful, so hard, without, without uh, being exposed with, for so long. That's how this can happen. This, every time you hear a man say, I'm fine. Every time you hear a man say, I thank my parents. Every time you hear a man say, I want my son to look like me. Every time you hear a person, despite you giving them the the truth and the facts, despite you showing them the medical quackery, the absolute lies and the ludicrous nature of even the claims that they make, which even if they were 400% true and provided 400% value, they wouldn't even be close to justification for this violent sex crime against babies. And I call it a sex crime because you're not cutting off their pinkies. You're not cutting off their earlobes. You're cutting off a very, very specific part. And you're specifically searching out that part. And if you were to do this to any other part, you would be immediately thrown in prison for a long, long time. A long, long time. And your prison stay would not be that great as soon as people know that you did this horrible harm to a baby. Believe me, it would not. You would not have a good life. That's what, sh- and it should be the same way for every part of a child's body. Every part that is attached to them that's connected with blood vessels and nerves and functions. This is a sexual battery against a minor with egregious bodily harm, a class A felony. Felony with jail time, prison time. But we let it go because rare UTIs and exceedingly, extremely rare risk of cancer that you can claim because any body part can get cancer. You could cut off any body part and claim a reduction in cancer. That's how ludicrous this is. HIV and STDs the last time I checked, any children that have are in danger of getting HIV and STDs, they need CPS call to their, their household immediately. They need to be removed from this danger of the sexual assault by this person carrying HIV or STDs. Children need to be protected from this. I mean, this makes Epstein look like Mary Poppins, like Mother Teresa. Like he should be the president of the United States compared to doing this to babies. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay, let's get back. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm ranting. But, you know, this information needs to be said. People need to hear this voice. People need to hear our voices. So please listen to my voice, Mrs. Woods. Please hear me. Please understand that I care about your child being protected from harm. And I hope you do too. And maybe you just don't know. But it's time that you did your research and you learned the the true facts before your son does that when he's 20 and he's pissed like I was when I found out about it and I brought this to my family. God, I'm so lucky. I'm so lucky. I knew... I knew when I did it, I knew that I was going to hurt my, my parents, everybody in my family, really. Because all three of my sisters circumcised a baby boy. 
all three of them. None of us knew at the time. I would have stopped it had I known. Biggest fucking failure of my entire fucking life. I shouldn't, I should have done the reason. I don't know. I learned too late to save them. But my parents, like I said, are good with me. Anyways, let's continue. He won't remember it. It'll hurt him more to have it done later. I just, I can't believe this. Stop this if you want to go through this and read it all. Old men can have problems later in life. Oh my God. An 80 year old man in a nursing home is not being taken care of correctly, so mutilates your babies. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good one there. Would you let somebody perform an unnecessary, harmful, risky, and painful procedure on your child to remove part of his body, risking death or deformity to conform to society? It is a deformity. Doesn't make sense, does it? No medical organization in the world recommends infant circumcision. DrMama.org, Saving Sons. Um, now, that was a very strong point of intactivism back in the day. But apparently the uh, American uh, Medical Association has come out uh, val- you know, supposedly championing the uh, uh, quackery of the American Pediatric Association, which is embarrassing quackery. I mean, if you look at the studies, I mean, they're so... Number one, they're highly flawed, especially the studies on UTIs. The idea that it reduces UTI. I mean, first off, UTI is so rare, boys. It hardly ever happens. It's an easy-to-treat infection. It's like getting a common cold. This would be like cutting out your, off your face so that your sinuses don't clog up to prevent another cold, to prevent a colds. You could literally probably prevent colds if you remove somebody's face and expose their sinuses. Or you could at least make that claim like it's kind of making the same claim as these people are doing. All right, so let's move some of these. I'm going to pop these up here. If you want to read it, uh, just pause it. I just want you to see what these people are saying. So this is the information this mother is getting. Okay? Yourwholebaby.org. Why take your babies home when you can take them home now? Why wait to take your babies home? Exactly. Right now they need you, mother. They need you, Mrs. Woods. They need you right now. They don't need to hear this video 20 years from now when they start doing their research, Mrs. Woods. And we are creating a um, mutilators accountability project. And we will be uh, searching for the victims in the future and we will be letting them know the comments that their parents have made on social media, the uh, access to information that they had, and uh, that, that will be happening in the future. So I know this is chance for a small chance that your son will see this in the future, but uh, your sons, I keep saying son, will see this in the future, but uh, I'm going to try to find them. I'm dedicated that much. Yeah, I really am. I really am. Um, this video is an amazing video. Um, you know, we're already over time. We're at 33 minutes. I'm going to keep going and I'm going to play this video for you guys because it's such a powerful video and it says so much. I am the daughter of a doctor who circumcises infants. She's an OBGYN. My mom took me with her one day to watch a circumcision. The nurse brought the baby in and he was sound asleep. My mom tied his arms and legs down. He slept through all of that. She covered every part of him except his face and his little. She used some instrument telling me she's just gonna insert this underneath the foreskin. That's when the baby screamed. He couldn't have possibly screamed any worse. My mom was hunched over him doing what she was doing while he was just screaming in agony. My mom seemed completely unfazed by this. Then the baby just stopped. He just completely, instantly stopped screaming. His eyes were already shut. The baby slept his through mouth it, right? Was wide open. His face was all red. I remember being kind of just bombarded with this thought: something is wrong with my mom. Yeah, really, there is something wrong with your mom. There's something wrong with our entire culture. There's something wrong with anybody that wants to do this to a child. Um, let's continue. Did you know? 
Circumcision is cosmetic, not done with proper anesthesia or pain management, performed without consent, decreases sensitivity, removes thousands of nerve endings, higher risk of infection, can negatively affect breastfeeding, permanently alters the brain, traumatic and painful, morally wrong, forcing is sold to skin, skin care companies. We're, we're cannibalizing our children's genitals so they can be sold for profits of corporations. <sighs> Nurses' testimonies. Oh, you got to read this. Uh, pause this. Video, I'm going to see if I can blow this up for you uh, and read through these. It's, uh, you know, if you hear these people say that a child slept through it. Okay, what happens in mammals trauma response is um, there's various strategies, right? Like I said earlier, we're all different. We're all genetically, biomechanically, and physiologically different. Uh, we, I mean, and there's a lot of similarities, of course. But there's also a lot of differences. And those differences are why we have different reactions to drugs. Those differences are why we have different reactions to trauma as well. There are different strategies of dealing with trauma that nature has created. If you remember, when you were in school, when I was in school, we heard there's the two systems. The sympathetic nervous system the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is the fight or flight. The parasympathetic nervous system is the rest and digest. Okay? Because the trauma response to the million, million trauma response to extreme trauma sometimes is shock and silence. The fight or flight has been updated to the fight, flight, or freeze mechanism. Freeze mechanism. Think about this. Why would this be a benefit to a, a strategy for mammalian survival? Freeze mechanism, right? Well, a baby can't run. A baby can't fight. A baby's heart rate being jacked to the roof is, is not going to help the baby do anything except for scream louder, which a lot of babies, probably most of them do. The ones that we get this ridiculous story from the mothers claiming that their child slept through it. That's the freeze mechanism. That's where the child freezes. And uh, that is not the child sleeping. You will never... In human history, has a child ever slept through the torture and mutilation of their genitals? This is a ridiculous, ludicrous, self-delusional claim by people who want to protect their egos. They can't accept or acknowledge the harm that they did or caused. I wonder what they'll go through mentally when they hear other, each other screaming in terror and agony. Sick American custom that shouldn't even happen. So true, Raja. Batson Belfry. Okay, you can read through that. Your whole baby. It's a talk on science is in. Per circumcision permanently al alters the brain. Um, I have these people that claim it's it, that it's you know it doesn't hurt the baby. The baby forgets about it. They they grow up and they're fine. I'm fine. You know I don't have any problems. No, you have a denial problem. You have an inability to accept anatomy, structure, and function facts. You have an inability to accept the fact that your parents made a mistake. You have an inability to the fact that all the leaders that you've believed in your whole life, these, these doctors that we put on this high esteem, we even give them a name, their own prefix to show respect for their authority. Call them doctors. I call them doctors. Because you know the sound that ducks make. Anyways, um... Circumcision is a fraud, a fantastic website. Tora Spingler, who is a nurse professor. She teaches nurses at colleges and universities in California. She's an amazing, fantastic, wonderful human being who protected her sons, who speaks out for babies. Uh, if you ever have a chance, become a friend with Tora Spingler. Spig Spigler, Spigner, sorry. Uh, I say these words all the time wrong. Um, just get, you know, she's awesome. Anyways, babies don't need their genitals cut. It's harmful and necessary. Bring them home whole, like 80% of the men in the world, your whole baby. That's awesome. Erica McBride, grab your babies and go home. They only want to do the circumcision to make money. Your babies don't need that. They don't want the pain, trauma, and body damage. You don't want the extra headache. Tell them to k off. Report to them. The health department for soliciting unnecessary procedures, greedy fucks. Right. Right. 
Man, I'm so impressed with you women in tactivism. Thank you, in tactivists. Thank you so much. I have so much regard for you women because um, you don't have the trauma damage that this causes. You may have other trauma damage. Fully acknowledge that. But you don't have the trauma damage this causes. You don't have the ego hit to your personal private parts. Of course, men are ra- our egos are so wrapped up in our sizes and everything. It's you know, or the number of scores we had, or the number of bed notches that we have. You know, men are so inflated with their egos, they have a hard time accepting the facts of their own anatomy, the damage of their own anatomy. Believing that circumcision is, is, is not harmful is not an opinion. Hundreds of boys I have seen who needed surgery to repair problems caused by the circumcision are real. The men who lost more parts of their penis than foreskin are real. The thousands of adult men saying they wish they hadn't been cut are real. Not recognizing that circumcision is harmful is either ignorance or denial. A real doctor. This is not a doctor. This is a doctor. Adrian, Adrian, Adrian Carmack, MD, birth rights advocate. You're an amazing doctor. Thank you, Dr. Carmack. Taylor Moon, please research. Mutilating a baby boy is not something to take lightly. Why do women think my body, my choice only pertains to women? Mark Norris, Ethics 101, no disease, no consent, no circumcision. Lillian Bosmans, that sweet little boy, your whole precious world, that little boy, he will love you harder than any love you've ever known. He needs, to, he needs you to do your research. What a powerful statement. He needs his mama to protect him. The only things he needs is love and protection. Don't torture him only because he's a boy. Educate yourself, not just about circumcision, but about the natural, perfectly designed male genitals. Reject the myths. Be empowered with the facts. Respect and protect your little boy. When you are circumcised, your penis is no longer whole. It is damaged, incomplete. Your penis is missing the best part. You better educate yourself about what you are missing. People are no longer silent about the horror of genital mutilation. The only goal of circumcision is destroying sexual pleasure. Educate yourself, not just about circumcision, but about the natural males. Okay, this is important information for everyone to know. This is a very in-depth and and extremely well done uh, report by Professor Kenneth McGrath. Please go watch that. I will include the link in the description below. Explains the neural anatomy of the human penis and the physical damages caused by circumcision. Pure insanity to do this to a child. Insane. And then society complains about male toxicity. No wonder male can be toxic. You're getting the true facts on this video, y'all. You're getting the facts on this video. Pure insanity to do this to a child. And then society complains about male toxicity. No wonder male can be toxic. When this is what you do to them. And how they begin their lives just days out of the womb. They're unable to process this trauma. That's a video that will turn your stomach. And if you're a decent human being, if you have a sliver of decency in your, in your DNA, in your brain, in your soul, in your spirit, you watch that, you will be disgusted, outraged, and ready to fight back and protect the children around you. People need to know that there's no benefits to slicing up newborn's genitals. The benefits, as I said, are absolutely ludicrous nonsensical, irrational, stupid. If you're a doctor doing this, a third, a fifth grade student who has been through basic fifth grade biology, fifth grade level science biology, has enough information in their brain to completely and utterly debunk the idea that circumcision is somehow medicine. And that's based off of just the facts of understanding what natural selection, how it functions and how it works. Just understanding basic science, the fundamentals of, of, science, of biology. The fundamentals of biology. The fundamental of biology debunked this. And then any other class that you took in school that has anything... Like, I'll give you a list of classes that I took that would debunk this. Sociology. You would learn how enculturation happens. Same thing for anth- uh, cultural anthropology. I've taken both of those classes. Uh, let's see, what else? Logic. Took that class. Logic. This is illogical. Completely illogical. I mean, even the claims that they make are illogical. I mean, on the Mayo website, it claims that it reduce, it makes hygiene easier. You know, it's harder to brush your teeth. It's harder to wash your hair. 
It's harder to clean your face. It's harder to wash behind your ears. It's harder to clean your feet. It's harder to clean your hands. It's harder to clean your ass than it is a foreskin. And we have major medical organizations with <coughs> probably combined uh, thousands of hours of, hundreds of thousands of hours of study in medical science and research. And these quacktards fail. Biology. Biology 101. That a fifth grader, a fifth grader could debunk this in a school report. <clears throat> There's no benefits. It has nothing to do with heart, uh, health and everything to do with cult mind control. And that's exactly what it is. This has created more damage in our society than any other single thing that we have ever done. And I say that fully and completely because I have detailed understanding of how this works and functions. I have understand how this influences our society. I have understanding how men become damaged, so damaged that they just revert to cycles of denial and, uh, and have extreme compulsions to continue the trauma on their own children. Extreme compulsions. Because you can go to these people, you can tell them all the facts in the world and they still want to do it. They want to do it. Which is um, uh, almost uh, incomprehensible. Ludicrous. Outrageous. Uh, you should get yours done first, hypocrite. Right? Just look at their faces. Boy, child, boy, girl, a baby, child, boy, girl, wrong. Right? I mean, just so simple. If anybody can point out the differences in these pictures between the left side and the right side, I am open to discussion. Again, I know all of the different forms of FGM. I know where they happen. I know how often they happen. Uh, I know I can compare the anatomy, structure, and function. I know the homogulus tissues. I know a lot about this. And I can tell you that cutting one child's genitals is cutting a child's genitals is cutting a child's genitals, whether that be a boy child or a girl child. And if you think FGM is outrageous and horrible and evil and disgusting, and how dare they? Yet yeah, you did this to your son? You are them. You are no different than them. A brainwashed, enculturated group that has so many... And so much compulsion to do this. So much. Uh, anyways, you know what I'm saying. Um, this has been at, this at 47 minutes now. Um, I thank you for staying this long. Uh, it helps to uh, get these videos out. If people watch the whole things, especially longer videos like this one. So I appreciate you sticking around. Please do me a favor. I'm, I get a lot of views and not a lot, and I need more likes. I need you guys to get down there, press that button. You know, it ain't gonna be that hard for you to do. Press that like button, press that share button, share this on your social media platforms. People need to know what's happening to our children. People need to know what's going on in our culture right now. Um, and uh, we can break this, we can stop this, and we can end this, and it's happening as we speak, that's, that's, that's going down, that is inevitable. It's inevitable. The only thing that we can do right now, as good people, is do everything that we can to make that process happen quicker and faster so that more and more babies are saved, so that we can have less school shooters, less serial killers, less wars of, of, of uh, oil profits and military industrial profits, less you know, weird uh, presidents, I, I think this has a huge effect on every aspect of our society. Less prisoners in our, in our prison systems. More uh, double parents in the homes with both parents raising their children. There's a lot of trauma and damage just related to having a single parent and not having both female and male role models in the household for children to understand and grow from. Think of the, the damage. This is a, like I said earlier, this is a positive feedback loop. The more you do this, the more you get of it. The more trauma is given to a culture, the more trauma that culture does. What is done to children, they will do to society. This uh, Joseph, he's a psychologist named Joseph um, Menninger, I think, or uh, I forgot his name, his last name. But anyways, 
Um, it's time that we become the people that we claim to be a brave and free country with people who put their children's rights and humanity and minds and bodies way before their own. Right? You don't mutilate a child because you were mutilated. That's a cowardly thing to do. And yes, that trauma damage may have turned you into a coward. And I'm so sorry about that. But that's not necessarily permanent. You can change your mind. You can become a stronger person. I used to be so scared to fight, I wouldn't defend myself. I got picked on, I got beat up. I was very tiny. I wrestled my freshman year of high school at 103. I was 98 pounds. I was the only kid on the team. The coach was asking me if I wanted to gain weight. I was the smallest kid probably in my whole school at that age. I grew to 180 pounds. But my point is, I got into wrestling, and I got confidence. Then I got into boxing, and I got even more confident. And then I won a tough man contest that was plastered all over the news in my town and all over the radio. You got a tough man contest with kickboxing. It was, it was different from tough man, but it was, I forgot the name of it. It was like a, a tournament, a kickboxing tournament, right? Similar to tough man contest. It was like, a, you know, two minute rounds, three rounds. So anyways, um, I did this thing. I was boxing and I was, you know, and I was uh, kickboxing with Zinni Reynolds in Columbia, Missouri. Zinni's a, like six time world champion. In kickboxing, fought top of the top guys in the world like Dennis Alexio. And I learned from Zinni and uh, I became confident, right? And I learned how to protect myself and I learned how to fight back when someone's attacking me or, um, you know, assaulting me. And you know what? The funny thing is, it's almost like a high school story, you know, like a movie. You know, the little nerdy guy that gets the girl. Um, all those guys that had bullied me when I was a kid are now scared of me as a man. They are scared of me. I've had them run away from me. <laughs> and I've never had to, to fight any of them. I mean, I wanted to. I wanted to get strong and protect myself and get back against those people that had you know, bullied me. You know? uh, I've been punched. I've been kicked. I've been, you know, uh, all these things have happened to me. Uh, and, uh, and I wanted revenge. And then I got the sweetest revenge in the world. They became the cowards. And I became the strong person who's a protector of the weak. I will fight to protect someone weaker than myself from an aggressor to the death, to the bones. And why I may not be able to do that physically with babies uh, which is fully within my right. You have every right to protect a child from harm no matter how extensive you have to go through. There is no limitation to what is morally acceptable to protect a child from sexual violence or harm, egregious bodily harm, a class A felony. There's no limits to what you can do ethically. But we are slaves in our society, this free, brave society. And uh, I'm not free to protect children. And as such, I will do it with my mind and my wits and my brains. And so that's what I'm doing. That's why I created Next Level Intactivism. That's why I do these videos. That's why I dedicated my life. I quit my career to do this full time. That's why I did all of this. Because I'm a protector. And I can't sit back and let this happen to the babies in my culture, which was such a, I just, I used to believe so much. My dad was an army officer. I used to believe in this country so much. I want it to be what I thought it was. And that's what I'm fighting for. I love you guys. Again, subscribe, like, share. Please, I need your help to get this information out. Miss Woods, I'm not judging you. I, I, uh, I do have the right to judge you if you go through with this. This video is not about you, but it could be. It could be. I Hopefully, it won't be. But 
at one point in time, I may be searching out in the future for a lot of children. And I will be sharing with those children the statements of their own parents and the actions of intactivists to try to prevent horrible harm being done to these children. And I will never stop until the day I am dead or circumcision is dead.